Good morning, everyone. Protocol established. Um, I would like to say thank you for everyone for coming here. And I would just like to give you a little history of the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory. So it started with a dream and a journey. We thought of, in 2008, we said, we think healthcare can do better if we all came together with the three public health labs in Barbados. And so our dream was to have an amalgamated laboratory. We would then go to the, to the present and we would venture also to the future. Technical difficulties? Oops. Okay, here we go again. Okay, so just an idea of where we came from. So when we looked at the lady mead reference unit, we were actually a molecular suite in a container. Um, downstairs was the actual lab and upstairs was office and storage. And then of course downstairs we had the actual equipment to do our first set of molecular diagnostics. Some of them where we actually started influenza testing in that container. Then you also see in that pic, pictures of the public health laboratory, which was based at the Winston Scott Polyclinic as well, and some of the staff that were there. Okay, we're going too far. This is what inside the container and the labs actually looked like at that, at that time. So you can see that we were cramped for space. Um, it was not always the best space in terms of working, but we made best and did high quality work regardless of where we were at that point in time. But with our dream, we saw bigger and better things to come. So this is some of the equipment that was available for us at that time to do molecular diagnostics. Um, we actually started from way back then in 2006. This was in 2006 when this lab was established at the, um, at the Lady Mead Reference Unit Laboratory where we wanted to continue to do more. We, keep, we, we kept thinking of what more can we do? How can we better um, protect the health of our citizens and help to diagnose and do surveillance? So our dream emerged and we kept thinking, what can we do? What can we do? And then luckily for us, dreams can come true. So following our, following our, our dreams and our, at the time, to the government that was in power, we decided that we would present what our thoughts were on what we would do. And we said we wanted this new state-of-the-art lab that would amalgamate the three labs, the Leptospire Laboratory, the Lady Mead Reference Unit Laboratory, as well as hmm, the Public Health Laboratory. And this is going too fast. And so this mission was actually accomplished in 2008, where we had the official handover of the new Best of Santos Laboratory, which is right behind you, um, to the staff and the government of Barbados. This was actually funded through uh, very heavy investments from the US government and then Barbados government as well. So this is what the new building looks like. So I know a lot of you may not have been, had the opportunity to actually visit the building, this, but this is our state-of-the-art state laboratory. Um, we have several departments within this laboratory. We have a clinical, a clinical area where we look at things like serology. We do molecular diagnostics. We have um, immunology. We do enterics and parasitology. And we actually have an environmental area where we look at monitoring the quality of water and air in, in places within Barbados as well. But we also do other stuff. Technology is failing me. We look at quality assurance as well. Um, we monitor things such as the HIV rapid testing programs that we have at the polyclinics. We actually prepare the controls that are used for, those, for that testing within the polyclinics. And we do some other stuff there as well. Um, we prepare all the media for the microbiology department within the lab, which is important in AMR. Um, and of course, none of this can happen and be clean and have that high quality if we don't have a good sterilization department. We also have a bio-level um, bio three suite, which is important for us because that is where you need to handle samples for tuberculosis, for TB testing. And this is, very, this is one of the very few within the Caribbean, and probably there are only like two within the English-speaking Caribbean um, that exist. So we are, also, we are also lucky to have that kind of capacity here as well, and staff that are trained to utilize this facility. So the current programs that we have at the lab include antimicrobial susceptibility surveillance. We have influenza and COVID, which everybody is aware of. 
But we also do other things, such as monitoring non-communicable diseases, um, such as diabetes. We also look at other sexually transmitted infections. Um, we have HIV, we have chlamydia, we have HPV. We do a host of tests in those areas, um, herpes, et cetera. We also do TB testing, and we do enteric disease surveillance. And this is important in terms of outbreaks. Other current programs that are very important in data hearts as well is the Global Salmonella Surveillance Program. Um, of course, I mentioned water quality monitoring as well as air quality testing. And we remember the water quality a few years ago when we had the issues on the south coast. We did a lot of work in that area as well in terms of checking the quality of the water in that area. We also do other foodborne disease monitoring. We still have our program from Leptospira Surveillance, and that program started way back in the 80s when the Leptospira Laboratory, which is the, old, the building on, on to my right, the blue building outside, that used to be actually um, monitored by the Medical Research Council of the UK and was handed over to government of Barbados, I believe, in the 80s, and then lepto testing continued at that point in time. Um, we also do arbovirus surveillance. So again, we know we just have, we are still in the, in the tailspin of a dengue outbreak. And, and so we also do testing for dengue, Zika, and chikungunya, and all the viral infections such as hantavirus and, and other viruses. So just take you back to the COVID. I mean, this is where I think everybody knew Besos Santos existed. And it started really with training. None of this would have been possible without the training and the efforts from Paho, who actually came into us in February of 2020 to say, okay, something is on the horizon. We're gonna get you all trained up. So it's five of us at the time, and we're like, okay, this is going to be one of those things, just a few, few tests and a little increase, and we'll be happy and we'll be good to go. But it boiled over from a very few samples, as you can see in the refrigerator, until we had tons of samples that we did not even know how to keep up with at some points in time. And then we had more training, because of course, the five of us could not, could not manage the number of samples that were coming in. We had many persons coming in. We had to hire lots more staff, and we actually had some persons coming in from technologists coming in from Cuba as well. And of course, then we had a language barrier because they didn't speak English. And so again, Pajo was very, very instrumental. That trainer, Dr. Gresh, was very fluent in Spanish. And he actually came in again, and he trained additional staff as well as those Spanish-speaking persons to make sure we were all on the same page and could continue to do our work. But none of this was not possible without the donations and the support from all of you here and others, including PAHO, the United States government, the IAEA, the Embassy in the People's Republic of China, the Republic of Korea, Caribbean Public Health Agency, Caribbean MedLab Foundation, just to name a few. And these are just some of the pics of the donations that we were given. We were given everything under the sun, almost anything that we needed, people were willing to assist. And we really, really appreciate it. We got equipment, we got supplies, and lots of it. We even had some things that we could not use, and we made sure that we shared them with the, the Harsons Point facility, et cetera. And we want to say a big thank you to all of those persons who supported us without your response, without your help we would not have been as successful as we were in terms of monitoring and testing for COVID. But I also want to say, without great leadership, it would not have happened at all. I would say the government of Barbados and our Prime Minister, PM Motley, without you being there, you came into the lab and saw us on the ground, what we were doing. And your leadership, along with those persons of the Cabinet Subcommittee, the, minister, the Ministers of Health, the permanent secretary, the chief medical officer, and all the other senior medical officers who supported us when things were getting, and we thought we were all going to break down, they were there to say, come on, we can do this. All the other staff who I know we had our moments, our dumb moments when we were like, we can't manage this, they were there to keep us going. And I would like to take this opportunity as well to say thanks to the staff. <laughs> and I would like to support, like to thank you by supporting all the lab through COVID and through our future vision as well. But to the meat of the matter for today, we hear about influenza testing. And as we said before, molecular diagnostics for influenza started in 2009, 2010, when they had the H1N1 scare uh, at that point. And again, we had some training com persons coming in to train us, and we say, okay, let's get ready for this. And then we had another outbreak in 2022, in the tail end of 2022, just after COVID. Um, we had the opportunity also some of the staff to go to Brazil and to be exposed to additional training and to see what, it like, what it's like to do the actual genomic sequencing for, 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 for COVID at the time. So we have an idea of what is actually in the horizon because we didn't have the capacity to do that. But it came back, we came back 
and we, sp and we spoke and we, and we discussed what we, we learned at the meeting. And we said the molecular team, this is something that we can do. And they were like, yeah, we're ready. If there's one thing they can say, the molecular team has always been there. And there's nothing that comes that they don't say, we're ready, we can try this. So they were ready. And what did we do? We said, okay, based on what we want to achieve, become the National Influenza Center, it's definitely in horizon. We can definitely do this. We went back and we looked to see what we had documented, review what the requirements were from WHO. And we said, okay, let's make sure that we have everything in place. We had our assessment in September of 2023 and the official notification coming back to the ministry saying stamp of approval. We saw it in February of this year. And we were so, so excited. I mean, everybody started to scream and I told them we got it. And we were, ah! we were so excited. So we were really, really happy. And um, so where do we go from here? This is just one thing. This is just one thing. We are ready to go. We are raving and ready to go. We want to continue to enhance our AMR surveillance. The next big thing on our horizon for this year is becoming a WHO collaborating center for AMR looking mainly at training of other scientists in the region, as well as continuing to support the AMR um, external quality assessment program with the ETC islands. And then also something that was on our thoughts from before, and we want to get back to that as well, is become the WHO HIV drug resistance genotyping laboratory. Again, we have all the backbone of everything there. We just need to step up, step up, and do everything that we need to, to get there. So that is one of the other things that are on our immediate agenda. The HIV drug resistance in, in Barbados actually started way back in 2016. Uh, following the training that we had in CDC and in Atlanta, and we decided that we want to go there and we continue to do that testing. But of course, we're not going to stop at genetic, genetic um, sequencing for just COVID or influenza. We want to do other stuff. We are, we are ready to re and raving to go. We want to do it for other viruses along with the influenza. We want to do um, AMR as well, genotyping, and cancer markers as well. So we are ready. And to go back, we want to look at the, the equipment that we have. This piece of equipment that you're seeing here, these two pieces of equipment were actually partner investments. We have the Illumina, which is to your left. Um, that was donated by PAHO through their, their collaboration with us in terms of being able to do our own um, sequencing for COVID. And to your right, you will see a sequencer that was actually donated her for, to us from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, through so their program for HIV drug resistance um, testing. And this is, is our newest babies that we have in the laboratory, our equipment for AMR testing. And this is from our national investments. And again, like I said, without national and international support, we would not be where we are today. So again, we'd like to say thank you for everyone who has been committed. But there's more to come. There's a future laboratory services. We see ourselves not only as performing tests locally for normal diagnostic purposes, we think, but we think also that research capacity is very, very important. And the Barbados Living Lab, is the goal is to provide specialized services in cancer diagnostics and in actually in any area that we think is very, that is of importance to us in Barbados and maybe the wider Caribbean. But we will start, we have to start somewhere and we will start with cancer diagnostics. We're gonna look at some AHLA um, typing want to continue to do expanded genomic sequencing and many more, and many more things. And I would like to say thank you, thank you, thank you again to all those persons who have come out, who've come to the lab, the lab open, the investment in the lab, the investment in the staff in the lab, through all of our collaborators, and the ministry always there to support us in everything that we do. We had our visits um, by PAHO and WHO representatives. And I want to say, we welcome your future support. Thank you. Thank you.